What's going on, church family? Hope you're having a great week, and I'd like to welcome you to DTS Deeper Than Sunday. If this is your first time, Deeper Than Sunday is a segment here at FFM where we take a deeper dive into the past Sunday sermon, having an on-purpose conversation with friends about the sermon, and closing it with a practical application. And we hope and encourage that this video helps you to walk out the calling that God has for your life. Before we jump into the message, I'd like my guests here to uh, just share their names and the icebreaker of the day, which is this. If you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would that meal be? You wanna start? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Corey Carpenter, and uh, if I were to have one meal for the rest of my life, I'd have to go with uh, a nice steak and potatoes, mashed potatoes, and um, maybe just some watermelon on the side. Don't need anything unhealthy to glutton me up. <laughs> nice. Okay, well, my name is Jillian, and I'm going to go with a much different answer. I would do chicken Alfredo because mm. it's just too good to pass up. That's, That's solid. solid. My name is Colin Gasho, and I think the one meal is there's this like rice, broccoli, and shrimp. Like, I don't even know what it's called, but that's what's in it. Yeah. <laughs> so good. And I'd go with that. I'd be satisfied. Yeah, that's good. Well, my name is Breno Aquino, and the meal I would choose would be uh, orange chicken mm -hmm. with white rice. Yeah, so I just I love that meal so much. <laughs> I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> you guys ready to jump into the message? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's so, do it. So uh, here at FFM, Don is uh, going through this sermon series called Children's Stories, and this week we're on part seven, and it is titled Fixing Your Eyes on the Promise. And it's cool, Don's been taking us on a journey in Hebrews 11, going through uh, different uh, biblical characters' lives and showing us how do they have faith. And this week was Joseph. And this week was very interesting because Don was saying how God commended Joseph, uh, commended his faith for a strange reason. It was because he gave directions concerning his bones. Now, this was something that I never thought of before. And uh, it's interesting because when we think of jo Joseph's, li Joseph's life, this is not the first thing we would think of. There's so many different areas of Joseph's life that I would commend him for faith. You know, maybe the, the many years he endured slavery or how he survived unjust imprisonment for something he didn't do, many different things. But, but Don really highlighted that it was because he gave directions for where his bones was, were gonna lay when he died. Funeral arrangements. Yeah, it was super interesting. And uh, so basically that was the, the main message of this sermon. And with that, Don was highlighting that, you know, Joseph, he was so fixed on the promise of God that he was worried about it like before he even died and wanting to be a part of it after he died. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting and super cool. Uh, but before, before we go deep into the points on what Don talked about, I wanna hear from you guys. You know, What's something that stood out to you from this sermon? Um, I'll go first. So what stood out to me uh, the most in this sermon was how Don pointed out that not all promises are encouraging in the scriptures he gave were John 16, 33, John 15, 19, and 1 Peter 4, 12 through 14. And then he uh, pointed out that if we don't recognize these painful and truthful promises, when life goes south, we start to wonder if there's something wrong with us or something wrong with God, which, mm -hmm. yeah. And it really stuck out to me because you have to like keep in mind that you are a faithful, even though you are a faithful believer, uh, your life's not just going to be smooth sailing. Not everything's going to yeah. be perfect, you know. You got to be ready for those uh, tough times to come along. And it was just, I don't know, it just really stuck out to me to think about it that way. That just because I've God in my life doesn't mean everything is always going to be perfect, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. I think for me, uh, it was the fact that, you know, Joseph made mention of his bones and where he wanted them to be taken into the promised land. And uh, it just reminded me that, you know, Joseph was holding on to that promise that mm -hmm. God didn't necessarily tell first to him. It was to his father and his father before him and the father before him and Abraham first. And it was really neat that even though 
you know, that promise initially wasn't made to Joseph. He still was choosing to carry it on and mm-hmm. choosing to believe in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, at this point, it had been through generations. And so for him to continue believing that, even when he hasn't seen it with his own eyes, was e- extremely uh, convicting for me and encouraging that we can hold on to his promises. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of the promises he's made now, like, you know, even Jesus coming back, like, we're, we've been holding on to that promise right. for generations. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just, that was what really encouraged me, uh, yeah, and stuck out. Mm-hmm. So. And I think going along with what Corey said, too, of how it, it's, those promises are almost made for those hard times. Uh, I think Malin said something during worship, uh, talking about the foundation, how it's not really mm-hmm. pretty. Yeah. And yeah, I true. thought of that when Don was talking about the promises, because it oftentimes doesn't look pretty. Mm-hmm. Like when it's just a spoken word of like, um, like in Joseph's case, that they were gonna be back in the promised land. That's all he had. He didn't have the, um, the like picture of they were there or they were on their way in or uh, he couldn't see that. But uh, what he had was the foundation of the promise. Mm-hmm. And that's what he stood on. That's what he um, believed and that's what he's commended for. Um, and so I think, for me, that really stood out in the sense of oftentimes the promise isn't pretty because you can't see it. Um, mm-hmm. It's not something that's fulfilled yet, mm-hmm. but it's a foundation and you can stand on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can trust God's going to accomplish this. He's going to do what he says, even if you can't see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a strong enough word that you can build your life on it. And uh, I just I love that about God's promises. That's, good. Man, that's really good. Mm-hmm. Like it made me wonder hearing this story because I never even realized that Moses was carrying his bones, mm-hmm. yeah, you yeah. know, to the promised land. Never even thought about no, that. Never. And how in Joshua they said that you know they were able to finally bury his bones in the promised land. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I just wonder like when when Moses and Joshua went to heaven, was Joseph like? So my bones, <laughs> they in the promised Take land or what? <laughs> Did you do what my sons told you to do? <laughs> It's just so, I don't know, it's just so cool how God, like, lined up all of these, all mm-hmm. of these men yeah. mm-hmm. in the same story, just mm-hmm. experiencing the same promise, but in different ways. Yeah. yeah. It was super cool. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, none of them, like, they had the promise, but none of them were given the picture of how exactly it was going to pan out. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really tough thing when we're given a promise. It's like, okay, but how? Like, right. tell me the details so yeah. I can, like, prepare and I can do it the way you want me to do it. It's it's not like that. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a walk of faith. We're walking towards something that God has given us as a promise, but it's, like, the, t- the tough part is learning, like, is walking step by step with him through yeah. mm-hmm. till you get there. <laughs> That's true. Because yeah. we want we want all of the directions. Yeah. yeah. Like if we order something on Amazon yeah. and we want we want to read the well we don't I don't want to read the manual. Yeah. But like it's important to read the manual. Yeah. Like if you're about to build a bed or a cabinet, you yeah. see instruction one, two, three, four. You see every mm-hmm. step. But man, when God says, I have a promise for you, mm-hmm. he doesn't tell you right away what the yeah. manual looks like. Yeah. yeah. That's you know, he just says, trust me. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Yeah. And it takes a level of trusting the promise giver, too. Like, yeah. you have to trust that mm-hmm. um, God's going to keep his word, that yeah. he's going to keep his promises. And um, I think it's, it's not only the promise that you have to believe in, but you have to trust the one who's giving it mm-hmm. in order to really, um, I guess, fully understand what you're standing on Mm -hmm. that's true so we'll go ahead and read uh the scripture which is hebrews 11 22 uh it says by faith joseph when his end was near spoke about the exodus of the israelites from egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones uh that brings us into the first point that don brought up and it was how long are you willing to hold on to the promise of god And along with that, he said, from the day that Joseph was embalmed until his casket was buried in the promised land was about 400 years. Uh, What if you never see the promise of God in your lifetime? Mm. And will your children see it? And what if the dependent upon them seeing it determines whether you hold on to it? Man, this was was deep. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think, like, 400 years? You'd think 
okay, Joseph died, but I mean, I would expect that they're going to get in the promised land within the next little bit because he followed or he was faithful to God throughout his whole life. But uh, just the time difference from Joseph to jo Josh. Joshua. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes, from Joseph to Joshua was 400 years. It's just uh, hmm. crazy to think. I mean, it's just crazy to think about how God's promise is always there. Like what Don brought up with Eddie, how he said, I can give you these uh, uh, suckers or mm -hmm. whatever they were. I can give you these, but I could totally forget by the end of this sermon. You know what? I just did a great sermon. I'm going to walk back and I'm going to mm -hmm. live or do the rest of my day and mm -hmm. forget, totally forget about what he had promised Eddie earlier. Yeah. But God's promise is always going to be fulfilled. So mm -hmm. like through those 400 years, there could have been a lot of doubt, but God's always there with them, you know. Just yeah. to think about really that. Good. And then that leads us into the first discussion question, and it is, what is a promise that you're still holding on to and waiting for, and then what makes it difficult for you to hold on to this promise? I really struggled with this question and still struggle with it. Uh, it kind of convicted me because it made me realize that I, I don't know. Like, I barely know the... This is also convicting. I, I don't really know the promises of God in his word. And, you know, Don mm -hmm. was listing them off, and I was like, wow, these are really good, and I've heard these verses before, but they're not something that I uh, have on hand and can remind myself of, you know, when we're in our day-to-day -day and struggling with things. And so uh, I am stumped at that question, but it's a good um, realiza realization for me to think, you know, God, what are some things that, you know, you have promised me in your word, and, um, yeah, it, it definitely made some gears turn in my head, so. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think for me, one, it was a challenge, like you said, to dig more into those promises, mm -hmm. um, but one I really hold on to is um, just the fact that uh, God's a healer, right? Mm -hmm. But especially in heaven, there's, there's going to be no tears, no pain. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking forward to that. I have health issues I'm working through right now, and mm -hmm. uh, friends know. But uh, that's something that's been a challenge to hold on to because I've, I've been in rooms where um, I've seen, like, teachers up in Alaska, uh, her wrists were healed. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Like, just to be somewhere where a miracle has happened mm -hmm. um, and see a <clears throat> promise fulfilled, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but to be in the room and then also be prayed for and not be healed makes you uh, really have to hold on to the foundation of that promise wow, really because good. it can make you doubt. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been the challenge for me is um, trusting God's promises oftentimes won't line up with my expectations. Wow. It's like my expectations will be like for that day was I'm going to get healed. Mm -hmm. uh, or even the other times I've been prayed for, like my expectation is I'm going to be healed. Mm -hmm. uh, and when that isn't met, we all know that's uh, like disappointment, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so my challenge for my faith is uh, believing and hitting that disappointment or not uh, having my expectation met, but then having it bounce back to believing rather mm -hmm. than getting like bitter wow. or yeah. like forgetting or giving away that promise. Mm -hmm. I still have to hold on to that mm -hmm. and I still have to believe it because um, I can't go the other way of like, well, I'm just not going to believe for it now mm -hmm. because I don't like that disappointment. Yeah, I don't like, yeah. like Joseph, I don't like waiting that long. He yeah. could have just said, just bury me anywhere and <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm good. But uh, it's something you have to actively hold on to. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. my challenge is uh, even in my disappointment or when my expectation for this promise to be fulfilled isn't met, I have to bounce back to faith. Mm -hmm. I can't bounce back to, well, then you don't keep your word because the promise that you gave didn't line up with how I said it should go. Like, you know, yeah. it doesn't work that yeah, way. Yeah, I didn't yeah. give the promise, right? Yeah. I can't decide Man, how this works out. That's good. Bro. And as it's so easier said than done. Yeah. But I think that's my challenge is I still have to believe. I can't just push that away because I'm afraid wow. of getting disappointed. Mm -hmm. A promise that I've been holding on to and waiting for is the promise of a good godly wife. Mm -hmm. um, 
one thing that I find that makes it difficult is that I just have to be patient because I know God's will is always going to be uh, the perfect will. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, obviously, I would love to be in like a great relationship right now. Mm -hmm. You know, that'd be awesome. But like, I'm 16 right now. Mm -hmm. I don't need to. Uh, I'm still in high school. I don't need right. to be jumping into anything that is uh, unhealthy, jumping into something that uh, leads into heartbreak, you know, and just mm -hmm. hurt feelings um, for everyone. And so for me to uh, focus on uh, not only my future, like through school, um, but what he wants me to do after school to find out what my uh, like full identity is, I guess, as mm -hmm. well in him. And uh, it's just something that has always been tough for me is just to think I need to like this is a good place to be in, but I need to be able to be patient and uh, understand God's full will and understand that at the end of this, at mm -hmm. the after I wait, then it'll be, I'll be like full of joy and full of uh, thankfulness that I did end up waiting, did end up uh, being, staying patient. So, yeah. Yeah. Bro, I just want to commend you yeah. for being 16 and having this maturity to wait. Mm -hmm. You know, as like as uh, the three of us as, as we're in godly relationships today, you know, we probably we didn't do it perfect, yeah. you know, but we saw God's faithfulness in waiting, mm -hmm. you know, and we want to just remind you again, hold on to that promise because, like you said, it will be perfect mm -hmm. or it will be worth it, yeah. you know. So, I mean, I just want to commend you. That's amazing, yeah. absolutely, um, to hold on to something like that so young. Mm -hmm. That's sweet. Yeah. Um, for me. One thing that I've been holding on to is a promise for like healing for my mom from migraines. Mm -hmm. Pretty similar to you, but uh, to your um, point. But my mom, she's been struggling with migraines pretty much ever since my younger sister was born. Uh, mm -hmm. And she's tried so many different medicines, so many different treatments. Many doctors have given her, her so many different um, mm -hmm. ideas to to be healed, but she, she hasn't been healed. Like, mm -hmm. she still gets migraines. There's many Sunday mornings where she's here leading worship, and a lot of people don't know that, like, me and my dad had to pull her out of bed, mm -hmm. and she was in pain that Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was always hard, especially, like, being a young uh, Christian growing up in church, you know, always hearing about healing. Uh, people would get, uh, like you said, people would get healed at mm -hmm. the altar. Mm -hmm. My parents would pray for people, and they get healed. And then my mom would still be in pain. Mm. You know, there were days where she would faint. There were days where I had to, like, pull her into the bed from the couch to her bedroom. And it would just always make me so mad. Mm. Um, but I still hold on to the promise. And I've learned through that that the Lord's promise is usually different from our perspective of what, what it should look like. Mm. Yeah, when yeah. God gives us a promise, it's important to have enough faith to believe that that promise is probably gonna look different than what we think right here in this moment. Yeah. Because when I believe that promise, my mom's gonna get healed, I just wanna say, oh, the promise is my mom's gonna be physically healed. Mm -hmm. right. But I'm learning that when Jesus heals, the ultimate goal isn't physical healing, but it's spiritual healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's like, good. that's always his goal. Whenever mm -hmm. Jesus healed someone in the Bible, he would always heal them physically, but then he would always say like, you know, where are you? Like, mm -hmm. worship me, follow me, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I've learned, like, uh, actually just a couple of years ago, like, I shared this with my mom. I'm like, Mom, I've been praying. I've been holding on to this promise that you would be healed, and this is frustrating. And she's like, I am healed. Mm. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I'm healed from fear. Mm. I'm, here for, I'm healed from anxiety. Mm. I'm healed from That's depression. Mm. And I can sit here in this bed with a terrible migraine, but I have so much joy mm -hmm. because, and I can't explain it, but the Lord has just given me joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that just really blew my mind where it's like, man, like you said, our expectations of the promise can be so small, Yeah, dude. you know, and just yeah. like in Ephesians, he says he exceeds our expectations mm -hmm. of so much more than we could ever think or imagine. And I see that, you know, holding on to this promise and I still pray and believe for my mom to get fully healed, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, where she doesn't have migraines every week. 
But even through that, I still rejoice in the healing that he's already done yeah, to good. this day. So. Yeah. Wow, that's good. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of what Don said, like, when he was reading out the promises. Like, we're not promised an easy life here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he does promise to give us what we need mm-hmm. while we're in it. Yeah. And that's something that my dad says a lot and uh it's true like we're not promised to have everything go the way that we want it to Mm -hmm. or plan it to but god promises to be there in the midst of these struggles and trials that we go through and promises to Mm -hmm. give us um his grace and his rest and his peace despite our circumstances Mm -hmm. and uh that's yeah that's a good thing to be able to hold on to Mm -hmm. Don's second point where we started to apply this to our lives uh, was to believe in the promise, you have to act upon the promise. Joseph was commended for his faith not only because he believed the promise, but because he acted like someone who believed the promise. God calls upon us to believe his promises and to live our lives as those who believe in his promises, just like Joseph did with God's promises centuries ago. So what are some ways we can practically act on the promises we're holding on to? For me, one way that um, kind of hit me to like actively walk this out was uh, preparing for the promise. Uh-huh. So like you don't see it yet, but just like Joseph, he prepared his bones for the uh-huh. promised land, for that promise. Uh-huh. Uh, so for me, it kind of, I guess, spoke to me in relationships of I'm in a godly relationship now, uh-huh. like we talked about, shout out Amy. <laughs> um, and but it took when I got that promise uh, like a year ago was I didn't just like sit back and say okay there's this promise there uh, I'm gonna just let that rest till it comes to fruition and I'm gonna just sit here yeah. uh, it take believing it and acting like you believe it mm-hmm. takes preparing for that mm-hmm. um, and I think for me that's how it it struck me is uh, so like for that relationship I had to prepare who I was Uh, my identity with God, my character, there's so much to be built and so much to learn and prepare for that, Mm -hmm. uh, especially in relationships. And I think that applies to the promise as a whole, because there's so many different ones, but I think preparing for those, um, believing those, walking, acting like someone who believes in them, uh, I think preparing is one way that you can actively do that. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Uh, One way that I like, kind of going along with what Colin said there like I uh, answered this as if I were to be preparing for uh, the promise that God has for me in a godly wife and the ways that I see myself doing that is uh, well first of all I love to uh, listen to Michael Todd uh, Mm -hmm. and he has this great sermon series relationship goals Mm -hmm. and we did a little bit about it in youth group uh, the little kind of like series kind of like thing and uh, to the points he had in that were, I mean, just to hear uh, point of views, not only from what Don has to say on Sunday, but to hear, but to hear something throughout the week, uh, like from Michael Todd was uh, kind of like a way for me to kind of see another way mm. into it. And it's mm. always, no, they're not always preaching on the same thing, you know, but mm. uh, and things that he had pointed out to me was for me to, uh, pray daily, uh, continue to pray and read daily on what it is that I want to find in a wife, what it is that I want to uh, have in a relationship, and uh, through reading, just to be able to see, like, does God have any insight for me on, like, today for me to better prepare myself again, uh, looking forward, and then to, like, before I even read, just to pray, God, uh, I just want to thank you for this day, and I want to thank you, or I just want to ask that you show me something through this reading so you're intentional with your reading Mm -hmm. is uh is another way that i find myself better preparing myself Mm -hmm. Uh, that's really great Mm -hmm. looking forward i guess yeah yeah uh one thing for me that i wrote down was removing counterfeits Mm -hmm. we heard about it a couple of messages ago with sarah and abraham and one way i've seen god move in my life you know, like me holding on to promises, you know, similar to you guys, you know, waiting on a wife, waiting on a pure marriage, you know, in this place of prayer saying, God, like, you know, I trust you and I'm going to keep my eyes on the promise. Mm -hmm. And God has given me great challenges by saying, uh, 
what are you willing to remove to prove it to me that you're going to wait? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And asking that mature question, what is something in my life today that is keeping me from the promise? Or what are some things in my life uh, that are contributing to my doubt? Mm-hmm. What are some things that are contributing to my insecurities, contributing mm-hmm. to uh, my lack of faith, believing that this promise could really take place? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's different for, for, uh, for all of us. You know, maybe it's uh, friendships. Maybe you have terrible friendships that always throw doubt in your face, telling mm-hmm. you, like, no, that's not going to happen. You shouldn't pursue a, a godly wife. You should just hook up with this person. You should hook up with this person. Mm-hmm. Or, man, you really think you're going to get healed through prayer, nah, man, you should try this medicine, you should try doing this, you mm-hmm. know, but uh, to really uh, take a self-reflection of our life and say, okay, what are some things in my life that are keeping me from believing in the promise, and I'm going to remove those as mm-hmm. soon as I can. That's good. Mm-hmm. You know, that's so good. that's one for me, is just removing counterfeits, removing distractions, and removing anything that will contribute to doubting and not believing yeah. in that promise it's feeding your faith in that more than your, that's like, it. your fears and doubts yeah yeah because yeah, you're either feeding fear or faith yeah mm-hmm. you know the other. yeah so it's not like in this walk with god you either moving forward or you moving backward yeah, yeah. you either feeding your spirit or your flesh mm-hmm. faith or fear which one which direction are you moving towards yeah. mm-hmm. that's good i love that mm-hmm. yeah and i was thinking something that i could do to practically act is like intentionally go through like a study or something to see the promises of God in his word and I believe we can use those promises to um, fight back when the enemy comes at us with his lies or with our struggles you know I personally struggle with fear and one of the you know verses I would use to fight back on fear was um, for we have not been given a spirit of fear but of love power and a sound mind and I think if we can use God's word and the promises that he gives us, uh, it will, yeah, counteract that fear and those doubts, and we can use them as reminders, daily reminders, because daily we're, you know, bombarded from the world and from the enemy, like, things that are not true, that, um, you know, God hasn't spoken over us, and and so we have to remind ourselves, like, no, I'm not going to believe that, that is a lie, Mm -hmm. and this is what God says, and this is what I choose Mm -hmm. to stand on and believe in. And so that's something that I want to challenge myself to do is like intently look into the word for promises of God and truth that I can hold on to uh, when I am, you know, either tempted or to be afraid or in other areas of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love that, like letting the doubts be reminders, too, because that's something daily you can walk out Mm because daily those doubts are going to come. But Mm -hmm. um, those can turn into reminders of the promise because Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what's Mm -hmm. true. And so um, when the fake doubt comes in, mm-hmm. um, that can just be a reminder, no, this is true. Mm-hmm. And when you remember the truth, that's when the doubts and everything just like, I don't know, it can't be, can't overtake the truth. Yeah. And so you can stand on those and daily as they come, daily you can be reminded. Mm-hmm. And that's a great practical way to do it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every day we have to be intentional with this. Mm-hmm. And t- like yeah. today, every day when you wake up, am I going to be... Um, taking a step closer to that promise. Mm -hmm. You know, am I going to be intentional today about defeating this fear, Mm -hmm. about defeating these doubts? Because, you know, we all know that we uh, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against spiritual principalities. Mm -hmm. And the devil, he's going to want to throw doubts at you. Mm -hmm. He's going to want to show you over and over, like, you're wasting your time believing in that promise. You're wasting your time Mm -hmm. having that faith. So we have to be ready each and every day yeah. to prepare our hearts, you know, and, uh, and to wait and to pray and to do these things every, every single day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a journey. Yeah. You know, this has been really good hearing you guys' testimonies, hearing personal stories about what God is doing in your life. Mm-hmm. And what I love about the Lord is that he reveals himself through the word, through regular people's lives, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, each and every week as I come here on DTS, I continue to see that God wasn't just moving in the in in the people's lives in the Bible, in the stories we hear. God's moving today in our lives, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. And and we're going through the same doubts, we're going through the same battles, but we're going through the same uh, victory. 
-hmm. and we're serving the same faithful God. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. And uh, as we close here at DTS, we're going to end with a call to action as we do each and every week. We want what God is speaking to us on Sunday mornings to uh, be practical. You know, what's the point of hearing all these sermons if, if we're not going to receive it and bring change in our life? Because mm -hmm. sermons, messages, conversations like this are truthfully, they should be a catalyst for change. Mm -hmm. You know, a catapult yeah. into, the, into the newness of yeah. what, should, what we should be doing. So that's why we do call to action here. And this week's call to action is this. Write down a promise that God has given you and pray over that promise until it comes to pass. Mm -hmm. This is something that I've done in my life that has been very helpful to me. And this is our encouragement to you this week. Think of something that, that God has promised to you. Or maybe you're in a place, an honest place this, uh, tonight or whenever you're listening to it and thinking, wow, I don't know a promise that God has placed over my life. Mm -hmm. Well, the first step is to pray about it. Say, God, what are you speaking over my life? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to do? And when God speaks to you, write it down. We see in Habakkuk, the Lord makes it clear. He says, write down the vision on a tablet to make it plain. So it's biblical for us to write down the vision and pray mm -hmm. over that. Because, because just like we see in Joseph's life, that uh, when we hold on to the promise, it's important to keep our eyes on the promise because if we keep our eyes on anything else around us, yeah. it's going to be, be it's going to be so easy for us to become discouraged and doubtful mm -hmm. and hopeless. But when we write down that promise and pray over it, pray over it, even when you're sad, pray over it. Even when you're struggling with, with fear and God promised uh, he's going to defeat that fear, you mm -hmm. pray over that in faith mm -hmm. and believe that God is going to bring the healing. Believe that God is going to bring that spouse. Believe that God is going to bring that freedom from addiction. Mm -hmm. Believe, believe, believe. Keep praying. Mm -hmm. Keep declaring. Keep hoping. Keep mm -hmm. having faith that God is going to do something amazing. Mm -hmm. Because just like we see in the Bible, just like we see in the, in the biblical characters' lives, God will remain faithful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It may not look the way that we expect or the time frame that we hope for. It might take 400 years, <laughs> but it will come to pass mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So we encourage you. Write down that promise and pray over it and watch God do amazing things. Mm -hmm. Can I pray for us? Yes. Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to come into your presence, uh, dig deep into your word, and learn more about you. God, thank you that you are a faithful God, that you are the living God today, ready to speak to us and ready to show us the promises that you have. Thank you, God, for always being faithful no matter what season no matter where we're at mm -hmm. you have always remained faithful mm -hmm. and i pray for each and every person listening to this video whether they're watching it the night it came out or 10 years later god i pray that wherever they're at today that they can hold on to the promise that they can fix their eyes on you father mm -hmm. and fix their eyes on the promise and have hope uh, have faith and have great expectation for your miracle work and power to happen and to be upon their lives. Mm -hmm. God, I pray for, for uh, anyone listening to this video that has never accepted you into their hearts personally. And God, we believe here on this panel that, that you give life and life abundantly. Mm -hmm. And before we all uh, encountered you, Jesus, we were blind, but now we see. Mm -hmm. We were lost, but now we are found. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross and and uh, setting us free from the, this evil world, setting us free from guilt, from condemnation, and from sin, and from uh, eternity in hell. Thank you, God, for uh, sending your son Jesus to do that. And whoever is listening to this video, if you have never accepted Jesus into your heart, we encourage you to do that today. Mm -hmm. Today is the day to change your life. Be transformed by the newness of Jesus Christ and watch him do amazing things in your life. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, joining us here on this segment of DTS Deeper Than Sunday. And thank you guys, yeah. Corey, Jillian, and Colton, for joining me here on this episode. Did you guys have fun? Mm -hmm. Welcome. Yeah, it was great conversation. Yeah, it was great. And uh, yeah, it was super great. And thank you guys again for watching. Make sure you like this video, share this video, and click the little bell 
on the subscribe thing, right? Here. Yeah. So click. Hold on. So I don't even know. Click the subscribe button, wherever it's at, and uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, wherever. And we want to give a quick invitation to church. Oh, yeah. yes. Hello, somebody. <laughs> this is Come your on. personal. Even though I don't know you, this is your personal invitation to come check out church here at Firm Foundation Ministries every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. You're more than welcome to come join us here in Centerville. It's always a great time, and you're going to see these beautiful people there. So what more could you ask for? Thank you for watching DTS Deeper Than Sunday. We hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next week.